so in my diy pedicure video you guys gave a strong message that you definitely wanted a diy sugar video so today i'm going to show you how i make my paste at home of course the first thing that you need is sugar i'm using a half a cup and then i'm using roughly two tablespoons of lemon juice and two tablespoons of water, which is gonna give us a quarter cup of liquid. You can also double this recipe if you wanna make a larger batch, but I just prefer to keep it small because it's more manageable for the next step. Some recipes that you may have come across will include things like salt and vinegar. I'll tell you right now, that is completely unnecessary. So throw all of that into a pot and combine it, and then we're gonna take this to the stove. And now is where we get to the really important part, so pay attention. Rule number one, although you want high heat, you don't want to put your burner on the highest setting. So make sure that you turn it down to medium high because you do not want this paste to burn. So after a few seconds, you're going to notice that your syrup is starting to bubble. I use a whisk, but feel free to use a spoon as well. Doesn't matter. Just keep your mixture moving because as long as it's moving, it's not burning. And you'll notice that my syrup goes from a really light yellow color to a slightly darker color. And the minute it starts to golden, take it off the stove. Don't cut the heat off. Physically remove it. From the range because it will turn on you in a second and as you can see there is a lot of foaming so if you're not quite sure what's going on underneath feel free to turn your heat down it does not have to stay on high so immediately off the stove you'll see that you have a true simple syrup so the mixture is quite thin and still runny however you are going to let this rest and also feel free to continue to stir it because it's going to cool it off and as it cools off you'll see that it starts to thicken basically what i'm looking for is a consistency that when i start to spoon it it'll hold its shape a little bit before it starts to melt back into itself that's when i know that it's ready to knead so if you've ever attempted this recipe before but you couldn't use it because your wax would always get really hard you'll want to try this method and knead it before you store it so you'll notice that i am throwing the ball back and forth between my hands the reason i'm doing that is because it is really hot it is very easy to burn yourself at this stage so keep the mixture moving because again if it doesn't sit on your fingers long enough to you know generate a lot of heat it won't burn you and also i forgot to mention the water i'm periodically dipping my hands into it just to coat my fingers a little bit to keep the sugar from sticking to my skin so whenever your sugar starts getting too clingy just use a very little bit of water on your hands and you'll know that you are done kneading the sugar once the color starts to go opaque so it's gone from a very translucent amber to a much more solid color and so i just roll it into a ball and i set it aside until i'm ready to store it and i'm going to show you guys how i do that but it's a good idea to clean up now. So just dump some water into your pot and that will keep it from hardening. But even if it does harden, don't worry. You can always pour water into it at any point. So for storage, I'm actually taking an old container from Lush and put just a single drop of oil in it. It doesn't matter what kind of oil. You just wanna grease it to make sure that your sugar does not stick. This just ensures that I can use literally every last drop of the sugar. I never have any leftover because it comes away from the jar so easily when I do this. Just this small amount is gonna be enough to do my entire arm which has quite fine hair uh, naturally, but the hair is even finer because I sugar regularly. So I'm putting some mascara so hopefully you guys can see. I do actually have hair on my arm. So as you saw in my pedicure video, you do wanna start off by powdering the skin. I'm just gonna use actually arrowroot powder, which I just grabbed out of my kitchen which is going to ensure that your skin is dry and free from sweat. So make sure that you keep it nearby because you might need it later. This is another very important step. We are gonna now mold the paste into the hair. For me, my hair grows on a diagonal. So when applying the sugar, you want to go in the opposite direction of your hair growth. So I am gonna mold twice. And then when I'm ready to pull, I'm going to flick. Because you're going in the opposite direction when you're applying the sugar, when you go to pull the sugar off, you're taking the hair out in the direction of your hair growth. Therefore, when the hair starts to grow back in because it wasn't pulled out at a weird angle, it's growing in the way it would naturally, therefore lessening the probability that you get an ingrown hair. And if you notice that when you go to mold, this happens, that means that there's moisture on your skin. So make sure that you repowder. 
So you're going to continue this motion throughout whatever body part that you're working on and at some point you're going to notice that your sugar is starting to turn colors. As you can see, mine's is starting to go like white or a light yellow color. That is because it is also exfoliating your skin. So it's picking up dead skin cells along with the hair, which is why sugaring makes your skin so ridiculously soft. And at some point you'll also notice that your mixture is getting really gooey and a little bit sticky. This is because either the room that you're working in or your body heat is warming up the paste even further and so it's getting really melty. At this point, it may be hard to remove it as well. So if you ever get stuck, just spread it as thin as I can with my finger or you can also use a spatula take a wax strip this one is a cloth one so it's reusable and I'm showing you the strip because now hopefully you guys can see that there is actually hair in the wax if you don't actually have wax strips then don't worry you can just use cotton this is some muslin that I have on hand it's actually the um, fabric that I used in the DIY drawstring bag video reusable strips are perfect because all you have to do is set them into warm water and the sugar will just dissolve this is what happens after your cloth has been soaking as you can see this is all of the dead skin that I was talking about including the hair once you're done waxing your body, all you have to do for cleanup is just wipe down with some water. And for aftercare, I like to use fresh aloe. So I'll just cut off a piece, remove the thorn, then peel it open. And then I just massage the gel into the area that I just treated. And then I will also put on an oil. And I actually want to give you guys a few more tips so that you know what to do if you run into any of these scenarios. So this is actually the wax that I used in the DIY pedicure video, but it's very firm, which means I can't remove it by hand. So what I'm gonna do is just microwave it for 10 seconds. So obviously it's a lot runnier. So instead of using it as a paste, I'm gonna take it onto a popsicle stick and you can just spread it on like you would a regular wax. However, it's obviously not as thin, but now you can just flick it off instead of relying on your fingers. And you can continue to wax your body with the stick or you can take it off and use it like a regular paste. Or after microwaving it, you can just let it cool slightly, scoop it out, and then use it at a slightly warmer temperature than I did the first time. So here you can see that I can mold it a little bit faster and a little bit easier because the sugar is hotter. However, do keep in mind that you can feel the temperature on your skin a little bit. And just in case if you guys were curious, uh, lately I've been using this Acure oil after I wax because as you can see, it's called Seriously Soothing because it has blue tansy oil in it. And my arms do get pretty red because I'm not able to hold the skin top. So my last and final tip, and it's also a really important one, is when you are doing any type of hair removal, especially sugaring, you do wanna make sure that you're exfoliating the skin regularly. So I give myself a couple of days and then I start dry brushing. Um, you can also just use a sugar scrub or a salt scrub. Just make sure that you are treating the area because as your hair grows out, make sure that it doesn't get trapped under a layer of dead skin and eventually develop into an ingrown hair. Hope I covered everything, um, but if you do have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I also wanted to let you guys know um, that I do have a DIY channel. So if you like this video, then you might want to go subscribe over there because I'm going to be migrating my non-nail related videos to my DIY channel. So I hope you guys like this video. If you did, please share it and give it a thumbs up because it lets me know that you like it. And I'll see you next week. Bye.